Hey guys, this is Pidge, welcome to the channel. Today is the beginning of my base build tutorial series for Rust. Just by way of introduction, I've been playing Rust for about seven years, over 6,000 hours in the game, and one and a half thousand of those hours has been purely on build servers. I love creating new designs, new bases. I always have done. And now that I've started creating YouTube content this year, I wanted to, to diversify away from Path of Exile and actually do some Rust content because it's, it's something that I still really enjoy doing. Uh, the series is going to be a number of bases. I haven't quite decided how many I'm going to do yet, but they will range in complexity. One thing they'll have in common is I play Duo Max. So it, it, they're not going to be these gigantic clan bases. Uh, they're going to be designed for two people max. And I usually achieve them. Well, I do achieve them solo as well. Uh, it, it will depend on how much you play because some of them will be quite demanding upkeep wise, but I don't like to sacrifice defense. I'm not a PVP Chad. Um, I don't build bases that are designed to defend online raids. My bases are designed around defending offline raids. You're obviously not there to defend those raids, so the base needs to do the job for you. The, the tactics in, involved are around slowing a player down to the point where they give up, or making them run out of C4 before they can complete the raid. And the longer somebody is trying to raid your base, the more time people have to counter, and the more chance there is of them needing to get offline because they've, been, they've spent way too long on it and hope that they can continue the next day, leaving us some sort of base to come back to. So here's the first one. I hope you like the build. If you do, please let me know in the comments, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the base in its final form. So the outside is all stone. This is all just honeycomb. And then on the roof, sheet metal with four solar panels, just to make sure our internal turret is always charged while the battery is always charged. If somebody wants to come up here and spear all these out, at least the battery will be at full charge to provide hours of protection. Um, I have put down these, it, it just depends how many uh, auto turrets you get access to during the wipe. But you can always put down these additional turret pods here if you decide to build a compound. Um, these will really help if people try scaling your walls. You can put down four more there and they will run off the same battery. If you start running out of power, uh, this massive section here in the middle, you can you can drop a windmill in there and that will help. Let's take a look inside. So here behind this wall we have our loot room, or one of the loot rooms. This wall here is to, is to protect them from uh, splash damaging both uh, half walls, so they can't gain access to both loot rooms. I always leave the first few doors sheet metal, so that it makes them commit to the raid through doors. And then we upgrade to armoured. Behind here is the other unlootable loot room. And then in here we have our tier 2, drop box, drop box, three furnaces, mixing table with a box, two bags, box, tier 3, and behind here we have our, what's my hammer? Okay. Behind here we have our six large boxes. Loads of storage there, but this is uh, this is going to be used for your extra stuff. Um, we want to use the boxes downstairs for our main gear. So um, this loot room will be the one that gets raided the first uh, if they get this far and then decide to blow in. So always make sure this is your least valuable stuff. Expensive to raid this room. Two just. Whatever you want to put in here, meds or additional smelting stuff, I like to put in here. Move down into the uh, to the bottom floor, and we have a turret and two shotgun traps guarding this drop down. Oh, well, it's an absolute pain in the ass. Back here, we have the large battery, and then here's a link up for the solar panels. If you do decide to link out to additional turrets, as I spoke about earlier, you can put the electrical branches in here, and then link those out. Here's a switch to turn the turrets on and off. 
Uh, it's nice and hidden, you can't see it from, from here. And the tall cupboard we have there behind two armoured walls. To access the loot we need to put down, I suggest using a spinning plate. You could put a campfire down, it's, it's easier with a campfire, but you'd have to destroy the campfire every time you log off. Whereas this way you can just pick this up, put it in uh, one of your boxes and then put it back out later, it doesn't lose durability. So I like to use these. And then you gain access to your loot. And there's the upkeep for the final for the final version. Easily achievable for a duo. Um, achievable for a solo, depending on how much you, you play, obviously, and what sort of content you're running. If you're running cargo or oil rig all the time, then you won't have a problem. Uh, if you're more of a, if you're more averse to doing that sort of content, then this might be a little a little bit too uh, demanding. So you might want to leave some of the items as uh, sheet metal rather than armored. Obviously reducing the raid cost, but ultimately allowing you to keep the base up. Uh, this is an absolute monster. It's my it's my go to two by two. Um, I say two by two. I know it's I know it's a bit bigger than a two by two now, but essentially um, all the loot's inside this two by two. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. So to start the build, we want a simple two by two stone. I'm gonna leave everything stone, and then I'll go through the upgrade process as well. There are some areas of this base that need to be upgraded before you can progress. We surround the squares with triangles and then build double height walls all the way around. With one being our doorway. Slap a door on there and then upgrade the ceiling as well. You probably have to build stairs inside the base to do this. Last thing we want is an airlock. We need two half walls here. Don't forget the ceiling. And that's the shell complete. Lastly, we need a TC. Put down a guider wall here. Makes it a bit easier. We want it in this triangle and we want it as close to the left hand side as possible. Make sure it's not crossing over the line. And make sure anybody who needs TC access gets TC access now. Get rid of the guider wall. Next we're going to need some furnaces. We need metal because some of the honeycomb needs to be upgraded. We won't have access to it later, that's why it's important. So we build a half wall there and a triangle. And I like to just put a floor here so it gives me easy access. Put down a guider wall again so we can place these accurately. And we want this right back in the center. That will allow us to fit three furnaces in here. and get rid of the guider wall. Okay, cook up some metal, and then we can start upgrading the honeycomb, both horizontally and vertically. For temporary storage, you might just want to put a couple of boxes here, but just make sure it doesn't cross any of the, the main lines. Something like that will be fine. For now, you can just place a tier one workbench here. Make sure it doesn't intrude with any of the, the lines. Now that we've got some metal cooking, we can start to upgrade the honeycomb. So we use another low wall here. We want to have access to these later, so it's important that we upgrade these to metal now. Same over here. And lastly over here. We want this one to be a half wall. And this one to be armoured. Guiding the TC. Put a floor on there. Jump up here. And we're going to put two half walls. Delete the bottom one. And put a low wall in there. These will need to be armoured also. You can, you've got access to, to these two until you upgrade your loot rooms. So it's, it's not... You could upgrade these to metal for now. 
And finally, make sure you put a roof on your TC, which also needs to be armoured. Okay, now we want to put a, another ceiling in here. Metal, and then a full wall. Metal again. Put the floor on here. This design is going to use electric for turrets. If you are not a fan of electric, so you don't want to use it, then you can close you can close this one off as well with um, a roof and a half wall. Otherwise, if you are going to use electric, then this is where your large battery will sit. You want to turn it around so that the controls are on the right hand side. And leave it at that. Now you can close this off. That will be armored eventually, but we've got access to all of this layer, so no problem. Okay, and then we will finish this side off. Okay, that's the first stage of the honeycomb done. Now we want to place another floor here and a double door frame here. Upgrade that to sheet. Put a roof on top of that. Again, sheet metal. And now we're going to finish the honeycomb. We're not going to use anything on the on the top floor, so we, we can just finish this off as best as we can. Don't forget to upgrade these to sheet. Lastly, we'll drop this in here, use up some drop boxes. Now we can work on this wall. Again, we're not going to use any of the space. And now we need to get up the top. Place down these half walls. Okay, and then lastly we can do this section over here. These are just temporary so we can get up here. They'll be made out of wood. I think I accidentally placed that on the roof. <laughs> yeah, I did. Hold on. Okay, that's that. Get rid of the stairs. Okay, and the last section is over here, but before we do the, the front section, we just need to do a little bit of make a little bit of change. So we put a half wall here and then a door on top. It should be metal and at this point we can also upgrade the center foundations to metal as well. Now that we've got that we can put down one more floor here and now we can finish upgrading the top. Don't put a roof there just yet. I miss one of the ceilings, yeah. This one sheets as well. Now you should be left with something that looks like this. We'll close 
this off with a half wall and then we'll finish this off with two half walls. A little bit more expensive to do it like that but it's for a reason. And then here we need to add a shotgun trap before we upgrade the ceiling. So we place the shotgun trap as far back as it can go and now we can place the ceiling in there. You can select uh, the shotgun trap to refill it and then we'll throw a door on. Lastly we'll put this door frame down here and there we go. All the honeycombs now in place. Now we can take our tier 2 we want to put that in here and we can seal these off. Do that with two low walls, uh, two half walls, keep saying low walls. And the same over here. Now we can start working on our loot rooms. The important part here is to make sure that you have access to the odd locks for anybody that needs them. If you're playing as a solo then it, it doesn't matter. So make sure you spin this the right way, it always starts that way and then it always turns clockwise. And you want to make sure it's over halfway. There we go, we've got access for anybody that needs it. Same thing on this side. And then all of your ceilings can be upgraded to armored. The only one you won't have access to is this one. So if you if, if you don't have enough armor for all of this, make sure you do this one. And then these you you'll have access to later so you can upgrade them. Make sure that's armored also. Okay, time to do the vertical honeycomb. We're gonna get up here. Put these floors in. These, uh, again, we won't have access to this one. So make sure you, you upgrade this one to armored. And this is the first time we're gonna expose that we're actually upgrading to sheet metal. We upgrade all of the, the center squares to sheet. Now we need to place down half walls here to protect splash. All four. Get rid of the stairs. And finish this off as well. Once you've got enough HQM, all of these should be armored. Lastly, we put two half walls here and these should be armoured as well. Again, you've got access to upgrade these later. Now you should have moved all of this stuff by now, uh, downstairs into those boxes, and we'll start building the last loot room. Before you do that, this wall needs to be armoured, and that's the last thing that we have no access to. Let's get our boxes in here. To make this easier, you can build a triangle out. And just be wary of the cord lock situation again, make sure everyone who needs access can uh, can get to the cord locks. Push this as far back as you can. Same on this side. And then one more at the front. And then the, the exact same thing on the bottom. And if you've done it right, you should be able to fit this window. Eventually all of this uh, this floor here will be armoured and this will also be armoured. If you can't afford that just yet, leave these as sheet and upgrade them later. Okay, and then we want double door frame, double door frame. And we should have three garage doors by now. Okay. 
Now to finish off the, the loot rooms. You're not going to have access to this wall. So that needs to be armoured. The rest we will always have access to. Then we want to place a law wall. Make these armoured. So now to access the boxes we need to use a spinning wheel. You can also use a campfire. The problem with the campfire is that you have to destroy it every time you log off at night and then build new ones the next day and put them down. So it gets a bit of a ball ache. So I prefer to use the spinning wheels because you can just pick them up, put them in a box when you log off and then put them back down in the morning. They don't lose durability or anything. So you put one down there and then you should, if you've placed your boxes correctly, be able to gain access to your boxes. You can see here that I've placed my boxes slightly too far back. It's no problem. We can just put a spinning wheel there instead. And just have four down. And then you can see we can gain access to, to all of the boxes. So when you log on in the morning, you would just put these four down. And then when you log off at night, just pick them all up, put them in a box. And that's it. Now if you do get access to a turret, we want that turret to be right here. And then two more shotgun traps guarding the drop down. I, I like to stand in the drop down. Place that one and then mimic that one with that one a little bit further back. Those will probably be uh, grenaded out, but I mean it's going to take them time. They probably don't come with grenades, so they'd have to go home, craft some grenades, come back, throw a load of grenades down there, and then they've got the turret to deal with, so a bit of a nightmare all in all. And now for the interior, it's just about furnishing. So I like to put two drop boxes in here. Oh. My tier three would live here. And then I put a mixing table down. I think I have one, yeah. fit a small box under the mixing table and then one underneath the, the wet bench. Lastly I like to add two drop boxes, one here and one here, just for tools or hazmat suits or whatever you want to put in there, it doesn't really matter. Once you gain access to more HQM you want to upgrade as much of the shell as possible. Just stay within your means, the ones that are important are the ones downstairs. So these should be your priority. So if we take a look from the outside now. The only thing that we have showing as sheet metal is the roof. The rest of it, it just looks like a stone base, but inside we've secured it to a really decent standard. Before we upgrade any of the external walls, we need to have enough to complete the honeycomb. Okay, now on to tackling the honeycomb. It's quite a big job because you need to upgrade all the external walls, the current external walls, to sheet metal. Well, right, let's get going. We want to make sure you get the foundations as well. The only one we're not concerned about doing is the, the doorway. Okay, that's the first step. Now we need to cover that up because uh, if anyone's watching they now know. We need to uh, reduce the amount of people that know that this is sheet metal inside. Let's get our honeycomb down now. We start with the square at the door and then triangle. Triangle and then we repeat that pattern. So triangle square, triangle, and then a triangle. We put our new front door here and then you just need to build two high all the way around. We'll sort the roof out after. But now we just need to get this covered up. With the triangle ones here you're gonna have to put that roof in first. Thank you. 
Last one. Okay. And that's a honeycomb. Get a couple of ladders, get up onto the roof, and then fill all of this in. Okay, while we're here, we can build the pancake layer. The half walls all around. Sheet metal. And then just lower walls inside to stop splash. Fill this up with floors. And lastly, we want to create some protection for our solar panels. This is a good way to space them out and also protect them from being shot from the ground floor. They just need to be stone and then make all of these triangles sheet metal. Solar panels will go one in each section. I'll wire those up later. And that's the, the base's final form, basically. He heading back inside, we want to create a couple of bits. Here, we did put the ceilings in. These two half walls, these absolutely need to be armored. I think that's everything done. Yep. Oh yeah, we, we did the foundations from the outside. So they should already all be sheet metal. Okay. Last few things. This one here, protecting our lower loot room, needs to be armoured. And what I like to do is, even if you have access to armoured doors now, do not put one on the front of your base. In fact, don't even put one here as a second door. Leave these as sheet metal. Let the raider commit. Let him commit to a door raid. Once he spent 2c4, he then has a difficult choice. So I like to replace these two with, uh, these three with armoured. Make sure you upgrade the door frames to sheet metal on the armoured doors. And there we go. The last thing we need to sort out is the electrics. So we've already got the solar panels, you need to wire those up. This wall here, behind the garage door, this also should be upgraded to armoured when you get enough. So we take some root combiners and we put three of them in here. Wire up the solar panels into, um, into one root combiner and then connect that to the battery. Then we take a switch. This can be quite fiddly. We want the switch to be in there so that you cannot see it from the drop down. There, like that. And this will switch the turrets on and off. If you do decide to add more turrets outside, like I showed at the beginning of the video, then you can add your, uh, your branches uh, here. And they will all run off this battery. If you don't have enough electricity to run five turrets, then uh, throw a windmill in the center of the roof and that'll help. Lastly, when you log off, you're going to want to put a window and a shutter on there and then pick up all of these and drop them in a box. Drop a couple of bags down for you and your buddy. And the last thing, which I almost forgot about, down here at the front door, this one here that used to be your front door, it's a nice little touch if you take these doors off add a half wall in there and make that sheet metal. Reason being it just takes away the option for them to splash damage both of these walls. I think that's well worth doing for the price of sheet metal and the price of, of having to duck. Um, so that's what I like to do. So 
So that's where one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten large boxes, two drop boxes, four small boxes, which should be plenty. If you did want more room, however, you could put a floor in here and you can add some more large boxes there. Those won't be accessible from you know anybody coming in here. They have to actually get through this garage door as well to gain access to them, so that's not too bad. Um, you could also put a shotgun trap or two up here with these boxes. Uh, something else that this does as well is it stops the splash from being able to sort of rocket uh, these two walls. So it can be a, quite a nice addition. I do really like the value of this shotgun trap though. Um, I think that provides a lot of value, so because I mainly play solo, I don't really have a need for the extra storage. And uh, yeah, there's the base. And there's the deceiver. This is my, this is my first Rust base build on YouTube. It's the first of what I plan to be a base build series. So if you did like the video, please like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you decide to use the base and how it holds up. The number of times this base has saved me from an offline raid is worth its weight in gold. So guys, appreciate the, the views and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.